estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Nesse caminho eu não desisto Estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Atrás não volto, não volto não Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Jesus é o guia onipotente Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Atrás não volto, não volto não And let's give Jesus a wonderful round of applause. Oh, my friends, I would really like you to pay attention to what God is going to say today because we are going to have sort of a Bible study, God's celebration, which will help a lot of people. God's celebrations are always filled with His works, His wonders, His miracles and healings. And we have been seeing God do so many wonderful things here. And in a meeting like this, our God can come in here and do things we have never imagined because He is the Lord, He is sovereign, He loves us, and God certainly wants to bless all of us. The Lord will pour down His grace and His power, and He will visit us in a very wonderful way. So let us pay attention to the word of the Lord. I have several wonderful studies here, and one of them is based on Job. I've already taught a few parts. I'll just read it to you, then I'll talk another part. It's in chapter 22, in verse 21. Eliphaz talks to Job about what is the secret for you to win any battle. You know, that those who unite themselves to God, they become one with the Lord. And I'm going to explain what that means. And when any trial comes, this person has become so strong in God that they neutralize any evil work. They are empowered to do it as it has already happened in the past. A man of faith who is standing before God is able to defeat a whole nation. This has happened several times. The heroes of the faith in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, there's something that leaves us astonished. But how were these people able to do so much? It's because those people had God on their side. Over in Job 22:21. Eliphaz says this to Job, Now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace, thereby good will come to you. When you understand the word of God, the Lord God is offering you an opportunity to unite yourself to the Lord. And those who unite themselves to him, they become one with God. They become inseparable so that the enemy cannot touch that person. Let's say you have already lost a thousand opportunities to unite yourself to God. Maybe your understanding wasn't open, or you were still too inexperienced in life. You couldn't see the responsibility that as a man, as a human being, as an adult, we have before God. So you ended up missing those opportunities. But you can now unite yourself to God and begin walking with Him. The fact that God has left you alive until now means that He is giving you another opportunity. Every morning that dawns is an opportunity that God gives us for us to go before him and be blessed. And God wants to do this for us today. So if we were defeated up until yesterday, let's unite ourselves to God. And if we unite ourselves to God, Eliphaz said here, we will receive peace, solutions to our problems, and strength to defeat the forces of evil. Thereby, good will come to you. What kind of good? The blessing of having God work in our lives. The, the, the Bible says over in the book of Acts of the Apostles, 10 verse 38, that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing everyone. Wherever Jesus went, he did good. This good will come to you, not only for you to enjoy it, but also for you to help others so that someone else may receive it too. Even if you never became a preacher of the word of God, but you are a Christian, the word Christian is similar to Christ. You are a witness for Jesus. In your day-to-day -day life, when you're working wherever, no matter where you are, you are able to do good. But what do I need to do? Unite yourself to God. Take hold of that word. Take possession of it. And believe that God will give you the victory. Will he give it? 
without the shadow of a doubt, the Lord will never fail to bless the people who trust in him. And he says this, Receive, please, instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. That's it. It's the secret. When I accept the instructions that come from God's mouth, he speaks to me. That is, it comes from his mouth. He didn't send anyone to tell me I am reading the Bible or you're reading it. You're listening to a message like now and you understand why. I already have the blessing. I remember, I, I always tell this story. This was 20, 25 years ago. I was in San Bernardo do Campo. I drove to a club to hold a meeting. And as I was going in, an older sister handed me a letter. That's why it is for God's sake. Read this letter. I really need you to. I folded the letter and put it in my pocket. Then I got the microphone to preach. When the service ended, she asked, did you read the letter? I said, no, I haven't had time yet. She said, then please tear it. No, I will read it. No, that's not it. I'm not upset. It's, it's that everything I wrote there, the Lord God has already answered through your mouth. I already have the answer. I asked, can I tear it up? Yes. So I tore it up. I said, I don't even know what was written there. No, but God answered me. I said, then thank you, Jesus. So when you hear that, when you accept the words that come out of God's mouth, this is so serious that Allah passed that, he humbled himself saying, receive, please. He was beseeching Job to accept instruction from his mouth. Whatever God led you to understand is instruction from God's mouth. He, the creator of heaven and earth, and our galaxy alone has billions of celestial bodies. That's excluding the other galaxies. And scientists tell us that there are billions. I don't know if they are right, if they counted correctly, or if they just calculated this number randomly. He simply has so many things to take care of. But he spoke to me. He spoke to you. When the Lord called me to forget medical school, I was going to start in Moscow to be a gospel preacher. That story I tell you, that I cried and everything. He was talking to me then. And when I go somewhere in Brazil or even abroad in any country, I am absolutely certain that God will work wonders. And he always does. My brother, receive, please, instruction from God's mouth. He will never deny his law. Wherever you go, wherever I go and preach the gospel, I am certain that God will work. Not because I have a, a private agreement with him. No, I'm just like you. Everything is by faith. But it's because I heard instruction from his mouth and he wanted me to be a preacher. And he spoke to my heart saying, with my power, you will heal more people than as a doctor and you'll take them to heaven. That's it, my dear brother. Receive, please, he says here. Listen, instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. The word of God must be inside us. It's not because I am a preacher. No, it's because I speak the word out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks when we read and meditate. It opens up. Then we find out what God has for us and God blesses us. And he will continue to bless us all the time. He hasn't changed. He doesn't change. He is the same. And he will continue to do his work. What do I need to do? Exactly what I'm saying to you. Amen. Today we won't hear any songs. I never thought that one day we'd see God doing what he is doing. Let us watch the Sponsor Moment. With the Word of Salvation, we are changing the situation of the world. Jesus has been working in our midst, and the signs confirm that we are preaching the Gospel of Truth. Peace be with you. I want to testify of the healing I received. I had been having lower back pain for several months, but I prayed. I anointed my lower back. With consecrated water, the pain was gone, along with the fatigue. Thanks be to God. I am Sela from Kazakhstan. Hello, Dr. Suarez. My name is Amina Arvora. I thank God and I thank Dr. Suarez for teaching us in the Holy Spirit. God helped me too. I've already written to you under the name of Sumanchin. I had a serious injury on my thumb because of a tumor. But after your prayer the following morning, all of that disappeared. The pain and the tumor were gone. Thank God. Those who help this work can rejoice. Their seeds are bearing fruit in many nations and in thousands of lives. And so I thought, I've thrown away so much money. Why wouldn't I be willing to spend some money today to bless so many people, to keep that door open? Because when I needed it, when I was rotten, when I was throwing money away, somebody was keeping that, that door open for me. So why wouldn't I, knowing that there are so many people who need it, why wouldn't I help? 
it's also a way for us to be pillars of of the church right of the gospel of christ and from the moment we start sharing the word of god with someone through our contributions This will return to us because it is a seed we are sowing in the kingdom of God. So the same way that we have this opportunity in Brazil to hear the gospel, let's say the gospel is within everyone's reach. We also know that there are other countries that don't have this freedom regarding God's word. We realize that we are like a little building block in the spiritual lives of many people whom we aren't able to reach directly, but we do it through Dr. Suarez. Nothing will keep us from doing this missionary work that is in our heart. When we get to heaven, we're going to know the fruits of everything we have done for the glory of God. Brothers, it is so wonderful. I was thinking, you know, that sister from Pakistan. There was one from Kazakhstan and another from Pakistan. There was a wound on her thumb, a serious wound. And she prayed one morning and later, a little later, it was gone. It's Jesus This is the gospel. This is the will of God. And he wants to do it in your life. Don't keep your sickness with you. Take it before God. Fight. Sometimes we have to fight for a while. But really fight. God, I refuse to accept this. I refuse to surrender. Healing is mine. Like I did when I had a vision problem in my 20s. I wore glasses and God healed me. And the Lord is healing people still. And you who have been called to be a sponsor, this week is crucial. We really need your help. As soon as the bank opens, go to NedBank and make a deposit. Go to any of their branches and say to the teller, I want to make a deposit to branch code 103910, account number 101919195400. That's at NedBank. The branch code is 103910, account number 101919945400. You can also go to any First National branch and make a deposit there to account number 628-3231-6641. That's all I need in the name of Jesus, and God will bless you. Dr. Suarez, I have the calling to be a sponsor, so I need you to sign up. This way I can pray for you. Every last day of the month, I spend 24 hours praying. Take a sign-up form, fill it out with your information, your name and address, then tear it off like this, hand it to one of our ushers, Because the next time I pray, I will include you in my prayer. How much should I give? I don't know. Whatever amount God puts in your heart, I do not even want to know about it. The only thing I know is that you become a sponsor. Whether you give a small amount or a large amount makes no difference to me. I will. I'll be praying for you. This is a ministry. It's like the brother said. He threw away so much money when he was rotten. Somebody was contributing. And now he is going to sponsor so that someone who is rotten may be set free. This is wonderful. But... That's because he was called by God. If you're not, don't contribute as I don't need it. And if you are at home, give us a call in Cape Town. Call 27021-911576. I'll repeat. 27021-911576. Or you can send us a WhatsApp message and we will get back to you to get your personal information. Write this down. 27079496. 9037. While they are signing up, let me ask them to show you what happened during my meeting in Brasilia. I want you to rejoice with the Lord now, and I'm going to bring you a message from Deuteronomy uh, 20 right after that. Play the video, will you? The Word of God ministered in Brasilia brought the understanding that is needed for us to fight against the enemy by the power that is in the name of Jesus. My friend, the greatest secret in life is not throwing in the towel, not saying there's no solution, because Jesus said that everything is possible for those who believe. We need to be prepared to fight the enemy 24 hours a day, but we're not doing that. We are drawing back, and those who draw back lose the battle. Through the prayer of faith, They fought against evil and in Jesus' name began to walk normally again. I had a heart attack in September. Last year. Yes, then my feet, everything became numb from my knees down. You couldn't walk without crutches. I could, but holding on to something, the furniture, the so walls. So now, hold both crutches up, keeping them off the floor. Then start walking. Start walking now. He is amazing. 
Ele é demais Cura o enfermo e expulsa Satanás I've had a meniscus injury since August 2018. On which knee? The left knee. The left knee. And did you have to use this? I was in a wheelchair, then I started using a cane, but I never felt firmly supported. Then put the cane on your shoulders now. I'd like to see it on people's shoulders. Start walking. Walk, dear sister. Look at this, folks. God is so good. I'm going to sing in heaven. I'm going to sing in heaven. A victory song. I'm going to sing in heaven. And more people got rid of their canes. I've had this problem in my legs for 20 years. Were you able to walk without the cane or not? Not when I went out. In the house, I still walked a little. Holding on to things. Yes, but when I went out... Lift it up now, sister. And start doing the victory lap. And this sister was healed by Jesus. I've had several falls since 2015, and last February I fell and broke my, my arm, and I had a, a heel spur, so I couldn't put my foot down. And now, what happened? Thank God, I am fine. I can walk. You can walk, and it doesn't hurt anymore. Not anymore. If you lift, try lifting up your crutches. So lift them up now and start walking. Isn't this wonderful, folks? Our God is awesome. He is so awesome. When we understand that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, Prayer becomes our most powerful weapon against the enemy. This is the gospel we've been preaching around the world, folks, and people need it. Idle talk is easy. Every religion has idle talk. But we need to preach, pray, and God does the work. This is the way you can walk on it. Let's study Deuteronomy now, chapter 20. We've been doing a study about the war laws that God gave to Israel. I can't repeat everything I've already taught or I'll just use up the time that I have to preach any new material to you today. You're going to start reading from verse 9. We've already seen that the priest spoke, then the army officer spoke, and many people went back home. The number of soldiers decreased considerably. Now the time for the battle approaches. God's love is different from man's law. With man, the more soldiers one has, the better. Ten die, but there are ten more to die, a thousand more, ten thousand more. But not with God. Nobody should die, but have victory. And verse 9 says this, And so it shall be, when the officers have finished speaking to the people, that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people. They would be in the front lines. Now the Lord gives them an order. When you go near a city to fight against it, then proclaim an offer of peace to it. And it shall be that if they accept your offer of peace and open to you, then all the people who are found in it shall be placed under tribute to you and serve you. Let's understand, Israel, we is not allowed to invade other nations, except when they took possession of the land of Canaan that God had given to them. They were not going to offer peace there. For several centuries, the Lord God dealt with the inhabitants of Canaan. They were terrible sinners, filthy. They were really filthy. You know that God in Hebrew, when we say Lord, we're saying Jehovah which means Lord. But there was also another word that meant Lord, which was Baal. Jehovah was the God of holiness, Baal the God of uncleanliness. So they had a custom that went like this. When a man sinned and he was suffering, what would he do? He would look for a tree, and any woman who passed by, he would grab and take her under the tree and have intercourse with her. And then he was purified. So Baal's worship grew, right? As sinners thought, well, now I have been purified, committing this evil act and many other things. To have a harvest, they had another deity called Moloch, made of bronze. And they would, they would, they would light a fire. And when it became incandescent, it was hollow. They would throw little children inside to have a good harvest. God said, I will remove you. And he did. That's why he told the children of Israel to take possession of, of that land. But when a faraway nation was against them, they had to fight against them. That's when these verses were applied. To the Canaanite nations, they did not have peace. They got ready for war, but God didn't want to see anyone's destruction. So when they got there, before entering the battle, they had to stop and do everything we've already seen to prepare Israel's army in a way that was different from the armies of the world 
they had to proclaim an offer of peace and say, People of this land, we are here because you've acted wickedly against us and we're going to invade you. And we are proposing peace now. If you surrender, if you capitulate, we won't destroy anyone. You'll just become our tributaries and pay us taxes. And it says here, let's read now so you'll understand what they had to say here. Listen. And so it shall be, when the officers have finished speaking to the people, that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people. When you go near a city, a nation that is, to fight against it, then proclaim an offer of peace to it. And it shall be that if they accept your offer of peace and open to you, if they open their gates, then all the people who are found in it shall be placed under tribute to you and serve you so they wouldn't kill anyone. They'd be placed under tribute. King David used to do this in his days. All the nations around Israel paid tribute to Israel. They were tributaries. What if they didn't accept the peace offer? Well then, now if the city will not make peace with you, but war against you, then you shall besiege it. Then they would kill everyone. And when the Lord your God delivers it in your hands, you shall strike every male in it in the edge of the sword. But the woman, the little ones, the livestock, in all that is in the city, and its spoil, all of their properties, their cattle, their sheep, their houses, gold, silver, everything was theirs. You shall plunder for yourself, and you shall eat the enemy's plunder, which the Lord God gives you. So the Israelites would take everything, and the other nation would have no right to complain. Then there was also a law regarding the, the, the trees, when the when the battle was very fierce, they were not allowed to cut the fruit trees, only those that didn't bear fruit because they needed weapons. Then they'd manufacture uh, these weird weapons like those we see in the movies. They were like, they'd gather a lot of men with a, with a large tree trunk and they'd come and hit the door with it until it broke down. But they weren't allowed to use fruit trees because they'd need to eat from those fruit trees. God really cared for them. Today, what does this mean to us now? Because we're not at war with anyone, but our war is against principalities. We don't have to pray for God to destroy. Lord, those people who are against the gospel, oh Lord, send some lightning bolts to kill them. No, we can't pray like that. God transform their hearts. We need to preach the word. We need to transform those lives. What if they don't want it? Then God knows what he will do. If they reject it, it's not our responsibility. But God will never use a man to hurt another. Back then, he did, because it was like that. There was no other way, because these were wars between gods. That is, they believed that their God was leading them, so they'd go and act with cruelty. And Israel, in order to protect themselves and to preserve their nation, we need to understand that the territory of Israel, which was back then big, was, um, it was smaller than our state of Sergipe, which is the smallest Brazilian state in size. Nevertheless, there was never a nation, no matter how big, that defeated them. When the separation happened, ten of the twelve tribes were only separated, and two remained, Judah and Benjamin. So Judah's territory was limited to only about 10,000 square meters, approximately six times the size of the city of Sao Paulo. This was their size, Judah's. That was Judah's size. And Sennacherib from Assyria came to besiege Judah and capture it. He took the cities and all that, and he arrived at the capital, Jerusalem. And he wanted to destroy everything, and he was arrogant. He said he had besieged other nations and destroyed them, that none of those nations' gods had been able to withstand him and that nobody could. So what did King Hezekiah do? He asked the prophet Isaiah to help him, and the two of them prayed. And the prophet Isaiah said, She shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there. But how? Sennacherib had about 200,000 soldiers against a city that had no more than 180,000 inhabitants. There was no hope. There was. That night, God sent an angel who killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. They were sleeping, he but didn't wake up. In the morning, all those soldiers were dead. Sennacherib felt so defeated that he went back to his land. <laughs> and his own sons killed him. So that's how God works, brothers. We don't have to fight against anyone. 
Let's pray to God. I want you to give glory to God here today. Praise him for what he's doing to you because he will intervene in your life. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, these people are praying now. They're telling you what they want, what they came to seek here today. Answer them. You have already spoken to us, Father. We are proposing, O oh Father, peace to sinners, and we are going to remove the evil that is in these people's lives now, whether it's a sickness, a disease, a financial problem, a marital problem, my God, any type of problem. I unite my faith to these people's faith. I come before you to pray now, and I'm going to bind this evil work and cast it out. And I say to you, spirit of sickness that is acting in this person, you are in their liver. And the liver is where many hormones are produced, but it doesn't been producing anything good because you have clogged the bile ducts and you are causing destruction. So I neutralize you now. I bind you. I forbid you. And I command you, you will come out now out of the gallbladder that is full of stones, this kidney that is full of stones. I'm demanding now, right now, I'm commanding you, come out now. I'm giving you an order. You must come out. You must go away now. I determine it. Take your sickness, whatever sickness it might be, kidney stone, you will come out now and you'll be thrown into the abyss. You who have lodged into their eyes, their ears, their minds, their head. This person came here today because they can't stand this headache, back pain, foot pain, knee pain, leg pain, stomach pain, chest pain, pain in any other part of their bodies. Come out now. Take your lump. Take your hernia. Take your tumor and go away. I command you. I determine it. I demand it. Come out now. You must come out. You must be to retreat. Go away. Leave. I command you. You must come out now. Release this person. Come out, every demon. In the name of Jesus, Father, I determine your blessing over each person now. And I declare that this person has been blessed. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. And you say, Thank you, Jesus. Now, do whatever you are unable to do. If you were unable to press an area in your body, press it now and see if it's gone. If you were unable to turn your neck, turn it to the right or to the left, turn it now. If you were unable to move your hands open or close them to open and close your hands, raise your arms, raise them now in the name of Jesus. Do whatever you were unable to do. Lift your knee now, bend your leg. Dr. Suarez, I was unable to move my ankle. Move your ankle now. Twist your, twist your foot to one side and the other. You couldn't do it before, but God's giving you his blessing now. That's right. Where was your pain? Who can already say, Dr. Suarez, my problem is gone now. The pain is gone. Raise your hand like this because I want to praise God in the name of Jesus. If that's you, give us your testimony now in the name of Christ. What happened to you, sister? I got here with a pounding headache on the left side and I couldn't stand to even open my eyes. But now in the name of Lord Jesus, it's Glory gone. Glory to God. That's great. Who else has a testimony to share now? Tell us about it. Raise your hand. That's right. One there. One on the other side. One back there. There are people everywhere now. Tell us. What? What happened to Stomach you? Stomach ache. What was wrong, brother? Stomach ache. Pain in the stomach. It's gone now. Amen. Glory to God. What happened, sister? Dr. Suarez, peace be with peace you. Peace be with you. Uh, I praise God for your Amen. life. I was home. I took every possible headache medication at home so I could get here today, Dr. Suarez. Uh -huh. I even had a, I had a gag reflex because the headache was so severe. I was here during the last service. You prayed. The pain lessened, but it wasn't completely gone. But now, Dr. Suarez, I received complete relief. I don't feel any more pain for the glory of our God. Oh, glory to God. That's wonderful. My brother, this is supposed to happen to you the green flag back there what happens pain in my shoulder it's gone glory to god there are more people uh over there tell us brother what happened to you a tumor in in my leg it was hurting a lot but now the pain lessened it glory to god who else back there what happened my eyes were very blurry before i came here i went to the health clinic to make uh -huh. an appointment with the eye doctor, but my eyes are not so blurry anymore. They are better. You can see better. Glory to God. Yes. How about you? Pain in my, uh, my ankle, and my is, foot. And is it gone Glory now? To Glory to God. There are more people back there. Doctor, I've been having frequent anxiety attacks, uh -huh. which makes me short of breath and terribly uncomfortable. Right. Now that you prayed, it's gone. Glory to God. And it has to go. 
What happened to you? I my had sister? a severe uh-huh. backache and body aches when I got uh-huh. here, but now I feel at peace and wonderfully relieved. Amen. Do not be embarrassed. If you were healed, raise your hand. The devil does not want you to raise your hand. He wants you to be defeated. He's the one defeated. You'll be set free. What happened to you, brother? Burning in my stomach. It's gone Thank now. Thank you, Jesus. Someone who's feeling pain on the top of their right foot, on the right side of their of their foot, and it's gone. Who else? Is there anyone else? Just raise your hand in the name of Jesus. My pain is gone, Dr. Suarez. Don't be embarrassed. Put the devil in his place, which is under your feet. Who was blessed? Dr. Suarez, I had this pain here. I felt as if everything inside my stomach was burning, but now... It's gone. What happened over there? Tell us, Doctor, brother. Doctor, I've had back pain for three days. It's gone. It's gone. Amen. What happened, sister? My stomach. Uh-huh. I had an upset stomach. Yes. Is it gone now? Yes. Glory to God. Is there anyone else, folks? What happened, brother? I had a severe pain in my knee. Pain and in now your it's knee. gone. Amen. It's gone. Glory Thank to God. God. Who else in the name of Christ? Tell us about it. What happened, brother? Yesterday, I was playing uh-huh. soccer and I twisted this foot. I was in a lot of pain, you know, uh, and my right arm foot. was hurting too. Uh-huh. This foot here was in a lot of pain. Are you free now? In Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Is there anyone, anyone else, folks? I don't know why people don't tell it. Then, oh my God, I could have told it. So tell it now in the name of Jesus, because God does the work. I was feeling pain in my in my pinky toe. Then tell us, what what happened to you? I don't have any more time. Is there anyone else? Then you may be seated in the name of Jesus before the real-life drama. And after that, Pastor Jami will stay with you. Uh, let me tell you something that's on my mind. I was reading an Open Your Heart letter, and I wanted to talk to this person, so I'll do that, then I'll continue. Let's first watch the Open Your Heart segment in the name of the Lord, because I want to answer. Katarina, please. Dr. Suarez. I've volunteered at the church ever since I was a teenager. As the time went by, I tried to serve the Lord doing the tasks that were given to me. However, today, I feel lost regarding my calling. I think I wasn't spiritually mature to intercede for those who had been victims of witchcraft. This really shook me up. So I began to question my calling. I need some guidance in the Word because I'm feeling very insecure. And I don't know what to think anymore about the situation. Please help me, Dr. Suarez. I'm going to help you, Katarina. Let me explain something to you. Once I was casting out a demon in Nova Iguaçu in 1975. I'm a little bit old in the gospel, folks. And the demon turned to me and said, Well, Dr. Suarez, he was making a face like this. Well, Dr. Suarez, uh I wouldn't want to be a flea on your back. A funny demon on your back to suffer the things I'll do to you. You wouldn't do anything to me, demon. Lord Jesus, burn this demon now. The demon was burned and left. I could have gotten scared that day. Oh my God, protect me. Maybe that's what happened to you. The devil threatened you and you're believing it. Sister, you belong to Jesus. Stop that. No evil shall befall you nor plague near come near you. And with this attitude, you will begin to cower and end up like Sennacherib. Soon you won't even be able to lift your head up. Rise up and say, I am anointed by God. I'm going to do the will of God, and God will use me. All right, now let's watch the real life drama, shall we? For starters, when we got married, our marriage was very, very turbulent because we didn't have anything. Everything was lacking in our home. We were paying rent. Sandra did some extra jobs and her husband was a wage earner. However, the couple's income wasn't enough to meet their basic needs. We even lacked food and we also got sick quite often. I had depression, and I was always undergoing treatment for that. I was hospitalized twice because I tried to kill myself. The first time, I attempted suicide by jumping off a bridge. And the second time I tried to kill myself, I took a lot of pills. Then I went to the hospital. I stayed in the ICU, and that's where I met Jesus, through evangelism, when someone handed me a a tract. So I looked at it, right? 
I read it, and I invited my husband to go to church with me, and he went. We had hit rock bottom when we joined the Grace of God Church, but I started to walk with the Lord ever since then. We've only had blessings. That was in 2005. We were converted. We were baptized. We really made a decision to follow the church and to follow the Word and also to be faithful, right? As we learn to tithe, we learn to, to give offerings, we began to, to learn and obey. I attended all the deliverance services. I went to church on Wednesdays and on Sundays for the Holy Spirit service. I kept going and seeking because I wanted that Jesus, Jesus touched me and thank God I was delivered. In 2008, I was delivered. I used to make bicycles to make ends meet and my ties were only 80 cents. So I think to myself, but that's so little but I would do it. The next day, I'd have much more to give. So I'd always say that I didn't accept tithing so little that I needed to tithe much more, and eventually the situation changed. Those who are faithful over little, God will set over much. This word was fulfilled in Sandra's life, who that same year was able to buy her dream property. When I retired, we received some extra money, so I was able to buy a ranch. Living on the ranch is a blessing because the air is very pure and it's very calm. We raise some animals, we plant, we harvest, then we eat what we've planted, right? All due to our faithfulness and our obedience, right? That we have, have these results, these good results. And nowadays our tithes are actually quite high. We have no lack of anything. We stop paying rent because we used our knowledge of the Word. I've been learning the Word more and more. The couple's ranch has 25 acres. In 2012, in thankfulness to God, Sandra became a sponsor. She became a sponsor. I sponsored my family then. Everything changed. My marriage was restored because we've been married for 47 years. Now it's a blessing. It's such a blessing to be a sponsor. We have health and prosperity. Now I want to live to be a hundred. I wake up in the morning, I pray, I do all my chores, I make crafts, I sell them. Well, I thank the Lord for everything He's done for us, for everything He gives us. I am happy. With Jesus, we are happy. That was wonderful, wasn't it? A happy couple in Christ. And she made an important decision, that is, she wanted to participate in God's work. She saw how small her ties were, but God will increase it. He'll increase it. Even the, the reporter said, Be faithful in the little and the more he'll give to you, says the Lord. And if God has also called you to become a sponsor of the work, why don't you do it? Maybe you say to yourself, I don't have the means. And that's true. But God won't take anything from you. He will give to you for you to give to the church. Today's the day. The ushers will pass by. Ask them for a slip now. You're going to make a decision. Those who already made the decision, ask them for a bank slip. This top part here is uh, for you to fill out and give it back to us because it's, it's important for you to become a sponsor. Why? You saw Dr. Suarez say today, how many nations, folks? 191 nations. Why not? Why postpone it? God touched you. Some have accepted it, but others have not. So why not accept it right now? If the Lord touched you, accept it. If you're at home, call us to become a sponsor. You're not buying a patch to heaven, you're not buying salvation, you're helping other people to obtain salvation. 27021-9115676. Again, 27021-9115676. Send us a WhatsApp message, 27079496937. Or access the website on gracesouthafrica.com. Then you can just go to the bank, make a deposit, then you can bring the, the receipt to us here, and you'll receive the Faith Show magazine, which comes with a DVD message. Dr. Suarez has explained this. If the bank tells you they're not accepting this bank slip anymore because they're switching the bank slip, ask them to deposit to our bank account, not to use the bank slip, to use the bank account information here. Branch code 103910, account number 10119195940. You can make a deposit this way. Do not fail to deposit. And there's another bank you can use. Uh, Dr. Suarez talked about this. What's the bank code? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> the letters are so tiny in the bank slip. And it's here. There's no predetermined amount or due date. Just give 100, 200 rands or any amount. Now let's hear the first question, please. Doctor, why did Ruben lose his birthright? 
<laughs> Pastor Jaime here today. It fell on me. <laughs> Ruben did something that he shouldn't have done. He simply had an affair with his father's concubine. They had a situation amongst them in the past, their culture, the, the customs of Jacob. He had his wife. His first wife was named Leah. And she had a servant called Zilpa. And he had children with both of them. His second wife was Rachel, who had a servant named Zilpa. Uh, uh, Bila, I'm sorry. He had children with her too. He had two sons with her. They were Dan and Naphtali. With Rachel, he had Joseph and Benjamin. With Zilpa, there was uh, uh, Asher and Gad. And with, uh, with, uh, with, with his first wife, who was, who was Leah, he had Reuben, whom she mentioned, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, and also Dina. So he did this. That's why he lost it. He had an affair with his father's concubine. Second question. Dr. Suarez, is it right to evangelize in dangerous places? Well, uh, it, it's every case is different. You should not, that, that is, the Bible says you should not tempt the Lord God, nor by might, nor by power. For instance, in the, in the carnival, people often have this, this habit of walking amongst the carnival blocks to evangelize. Is it a strategy? Yes, I can't disagree if it was God's guidance. However, can you imagine if those people decide to hand out their literature in front of the church? Would you like that? So every case is different. We need to be led by the Spirit of God. If God leads you, you can go into the lion's den, right? But if he doesn't, don't do it. <laughs> so you shall, not, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. We must be careful. Of course, for instance, I went once, many years ago. Even my mom went with me to the outreach. It was 1985. You see, Dr. Suarez said 1975. I'm just a little bit behind. 1985, 34 years ago. We did an outreach at Hacienda. Have you heard of Hacienda in Rio de Janeiro? We went to evangelize there. The alleys were so narrow there. That is, how can you get a fridge through this? I still don't know. <laughs> But when we arrived there, we saw we walked by places in the communities and dangerous places, several places. We were fine there. We were led by God. The people respected us. We went in as a group. We evangelized. We handed out flyers. We prayed for people and everywhere. And every often we saw people armed there as well. Hey, bro, pray for us, okay? <laughs> All right, God bless you. Every case is different. We need to be in the Lord's guidance, okay? Well, let me talk about Grace Store. I didn't give you the phone number before, nor the website, which is on gracesouthafrica.com. That's the Grace Store website. You can also order those books by the WhatsApp, zero... 27079496937 again 27079496937 now let's watch the let's watch the grace tv moment please anytime i felt any sadness in my heart, I would run to church. But when i moved here from São Paulo, i realized that there were no daily services. So what did I do? I subscribed to Grace TV. So to me, it's a daily supplement, 24 hours a day. I used to have back pain, but with the Grace TV, 24 hours a day, that began working. Both Dr. Suarez and Pastor Jaime, or any pastors who were holding a service, that would always cast out any pain and any sickness. When they prayed, I would closely listen to the word, and that brought, it brought me strength and more health. All of a sudden, the pain was gone. I've fallen a few times, and I thought my back will suffer now. Not so. My back was completely healed. I've always asked God for my home to become a temple, you know, with prayer. And with the Grace TV, I got that. The Grace TV is a church in your home. If you don't have it, you're missing out. You can contact us. Our WhatsApp number is 27079-4969037. Again, 27079-4969037. This is the number you can call us here anytime you need to. Or you can send us a message inquiring our Grace TV packages. You can access the website on gracesouthafrica.com. Those at home, send us a message. Raise your hand, please. Father, we send a blessing now into the lives of everyone who watch the Grace TV now. My Father, it's on 24 hours a day, oh God. The Grace TV is a blessing for many people. And there's someone now who's feeling severe pain in their stomach. May this person receive healing, whether they are here or at home, wherever they are. May they receive the healing now in the name of Jesus. Amen.